Hi, I'm Andrew and welcome to the Neon Knitter. So in this video, I'm going to take you along with me to the Shepherd's Harvest Sheep and Wool Festival for 2024. So, a little overview, Shepherd's Harvest Sheep and Wool Festival and I'm filming, okay, I will say I went on Saturday and I'm filming my intro and outro today, which is Monday, because this is the first day I've gotten around to doing it. So this video is a little late. Apologies. Um, but the Shepherd's Harvest Sheep and Wool Festival, uh, Mother's Day weekend, May 11th and 12th of 2024. It's always Mother's Day weekend. And hopefully this year I got some better footage than I did last year because I remember my footage last year was kind of all over the place because I was the first event I ever filmed. Um, there was um, a new building open this year. So there was buildings A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, and last year there was just A, B, C, D, E. And there's also the barn. And then, yeah, so there's a bunch of buildings at... So it's at the Washington County Fairgrounds in Lake Elmo, Minnesota. And it's the largest event I go to all year. It's the only one that costs admission. It's $5 admission to get in. Um, yeah. And I will say this year, Shepherd's Harvest finally created an Instagram account. Previously, they only had an appearance on Facebook or a presence on Facebook. Um, now they have an Instagram account as well. So that is that. Also on the back cover, there's a giant Stephen B ad, which I think is fun. But um, yeah, they need to update their ad because some of the companies listed here have since gone out of business. So they really need to update this because Alchemy Yarns is not around anymore. Um, yeah, so things like that um but yeah so the list of vendors is really huge so i'm just gonna show you a few things before i move on to my footage from the event so here is so building a is just demos so there's not a map for building A because there's no vendors in there. But um, here's building B, all the vendors in there. And some vendors take up more than one spot, as you can see. But that's who's all in building B. And here's for building C. And here's building D. And then... It's a smaller thing, but if I can find it, here is the map for buildings E and F, which are much smaller. So that is that. And yeah, there's um, one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven, eight. There are nine pages of vendors, you guys. Nine pages. Actually, 11. There's actually 11 pages of vendors because there's also the pages that tells who's vending in the barn. That's a separate page. So there's actually 11 pages of vendors. Well, 10 and a half pages technically, but... Um, because this page is only half list of vendors and half a map of buildings E and F, but yeah, so it's a really big event. So yeah. So anyways, before I get started, I am wearing my most recent finished object. This I made specifically to wear to Shepherd's Harvest. And this is the Antler Sleeve Sweater by Stephen West. Excuse me. The Antler Sleeve Sweater by Stephen West. 
And um, I made this using the Vermilion River Alpacas Bumblebee yarn, which is 50% black alpaca and 50% yellow merino. Um, and I bought this last year at Shepherd's Harvest. So, yeah. So in my next podcast episode, I have two finished objects. And so I'm going to wear my other one in that episode. And then I'll tell you to hop back to this one if you want to see me wearing this one. So I'm just going to show it quick. Um, usually in these Fiber Fair videos, I don't show it because I usually show it off in the podcast episode. But I'm just going to show you where it hits on me. Yep. So that is my antler sleeve sweater. Oh, and also, sorry, the side does have cables down it as well, both sides, as well as the sleeves. So, that is my antler sleeve sweater with the yarn I bought last year at Shepherd's Harvest. Um, and I'm really proud of it. I just finished it, um, I actually just finished it on Saturday. Um, I had one sleeve cuff left when I left for Shepherd's Harvest and I didn't get it done in time. So I actually finished it at Shepherd's Harvest and then I threw it on while I was there. So yeah, I was just walking around in the undershirt, but anyways, so, but I'm very proud of this sweater. So yes, I will show you my other finished object in my next podcast episode. I'll show this again, but I won't be wearing it. So yeah. And on Wednesday, I plan to do my photo shoot with it. So, yeah, stay tuned for that as well. That should be in the thumbnail of my podcast episode. So, yeah. Anyways, <coughs> excuse me. Let's show, I'll show you the footage now. And then after that, I will come back and show you what all I bought.
Okay, so here is what I purchased at Shepherd's Harvest. Um, so I purchased a couple things, and they're both for the same project. Um, I plan to and I have a pattern picked out and blanking on the designer's name, but it will be on the screen. But I'll show you that in a little bit. So, I saw this absolutely stunning skein of yarn, and I had to have it. Here it is. I thought it was so stunning. I had to have it, I swear. So beautiful. This is from Gnome Schoolhouse. Um, they are, I don't remember if they're in North Dakota or South Dakota, but they're based out of one of the Dakotas. Um, and they, um, they have a YouTube channel called YouTube, E-W-E Tube. It's really a cute name. I think there's actually two channels with that name, so you got to make sure you find the right one. but. Anyways, um, I did at one point watch their video on how to pre-wash and skein a yarn because I needed to know how to do that at one point. So, yeah, I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago when I knit the, it was the Stephen West shawl, it was the, um, the Glacier Sweep shawl, and the yarn um, the reviews of that yarn were saying that you should probably pre-wash it first because it shrinks and turns your hand colors otherwise. Yeah, so I had to know how to pre-wash your skinny yarn, so I watched their video on how to do it. So I told them that, and they were pretty excited that I had watched one of their videos. So, but yeah. Um, also, they are called Shepherd Industries, so they kind of have a couple different names. Gnome Schoolhouse Shepherd Industry, but they are Gnome Schoolhouse on Instagram. Um, yeah, so that is that. It is their Dakota Spun yarn. It is sport weight. This is a sport weight yarn, 400 yards. And I don't know the percentages, but it's cheese water wool and silk. So. So it's wool and so it's silk and tease water wool. And it says it's self striping. I think that's just her way of saying it's variegated. Because if you open it up, it it's like this. So it's not self striping. It's clearly a regular variegated hand dyed skein of yarn. But anyways. And I don't know what kind of dye she used, but it was so pretty I had to have it, guys. So I walked around the festival a couple more times before I actually um, went to purchase it. And then I did sit down briefly and browse Ravelry for patterns because I wanted to make sure that I could find a pattern where I had enough. And turns out I will only need half the skein. But, yeah, I'm going to be making a pattern called the Blank Slate T. And, again, I'm blanking on the designer's name, but it will be on the screen, as well as a photo of what I'm going to be making. Um, the first photo I am showing is the designer's photo. The second photo is a project page photo that she featured that has a variegated yarn in it, because the original sample doesn't use variegated yarn. So that way you can get an idea of what it'll look like with the variegated yarn. And so this is the contrast color. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
And so here's the main color. This is, there's a vendor there called Love You, uh, meaning E-W-E. -E. Um, I think it's L-U-V-E-W-E, -E, I think. Um, I couldn't find any online presence for her. I think she just vends at Fiber Fairs. But she doesn't have her own yarn. She um, purchases from other companies and then sells it. Mainly she has a lot of brown sheep that she sells. Um, I think there is a couple other small quantities of yarn she has from other brands, but she has a lot of brown sheep, a lot of lamb's pride and a lot of other stuff. And anyway, she has a surplus of this lamb's pride superwash sport. So she had bins of assorted colors, and you had to dig to see if she had enough of the right colors and all the things. Like, it was just all jumbled together. And this is discontinued, so once she sells out of it, she will not be getting any more in. So, I only need six skeins of this for my project, but I bought seven just to be safe. Um, but yes, this is called Shane's Red. It is 180 yards. 100% uh, wool, sport weight, um, and I couldn't go wrong with the price. They were four dollars a skein, so I got exactly the quantity I needed without breaking my budget. So that was really good. I have seven of these. Again, they're all in my bag over there. I'm not going to hold up seven skeins of the same color to show you guys because. You get the idea with this one, but that's the main color that's going to go with this. And I think that's going to look really good. So yeah, that is what I bought at Pepper Harvest. And I'm really excited to knit that in time to wear it next year. And hopefully I won't actually have to finish it at the festival. Hopefully I will have already finished it by then. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so that's what all I bought at Shepherd's Harvest, and that is everything I have to share with you guys. So, I'm Andrew. Thank you for checking in here at the Neon Knitter, and I will see you in my next video.